Okay guys, let's talk some type basics. Uh, you've already by this point done some research on, you know, with, with the links that I've sent you, you've looked at videos that, that gave you kind of an overview of type. Uh, and hopefully in those videos, based on the comments that I saw some people um, respond with, um, there was some good info there. And some people also shared some great uh, additional typographic uh, assets and resources. So we appreciate you doing that. Um, but for our purposes of this last project, you know, type is, is going to be a component and those videos covered essentially what we'll cover here, but uh, we'll just make sure that we um, uh, enhance or, or supplement that information uh, with some uh, direct instruction on some of the main points that you'll be working with. Okay, so when it comes to type, as we talked about in class, spacing is everything, okay? Uh, and some of the main types of spacing you'll be uh, concerned about are going to be worked we'll briefly talk about here today. First one is letter spacing, okay? Now I'm in, a, I'm in InDesign. The same approach is what uh, you'll do in Illustrator if you're using the type palette there. It's essentially the same thing, okay? Letter spacing is spacing letters, adding space to letters across a whole word or a line of copy, okay? So if I go to my letter spacing and I open my character palette here, if I go to this, letter spacing is also called tracking and I can apply space to this whole word. I can do it, you know, I can add, I can down, you know, uh, use this drop down and select a, a, an assigned value. I can put in whatever custom number I want there. I can hit this space here manually, you know, one at a time and see how much space I want to add. Now, you want to be really careful with letter spacing, especially if you're using, you know, uh, lowercase letters, you don't want to overdo it. Um, sometimes in a logo situation, you'll see, you know, one single short word with really, you know, with like a, with all caps and maybe a thin typeface and it's um, opened up, you know, pretty wide. That can be okay. Obviously the thing you want to be careful about is not to make it look like an eye chart where you're looking at a bunch of individual letters. Okay. So you don't want to overly do uh, or apply uh, line spacing in a way that, I'm sorry, letter spacing in a way that just becomes crazy. Okay. Half the time I, you know, I don't use a lot of it at all. Um, especially in a text situation, I don't really open up my text that much more unless the, unless the type seems a little dense. Here you can see I've already opened it up and I don't like that as much. I'm starting to look through the type. I prefer to have it be set at zero, um, which is, you know, let's see here, sorry, is uh, right there, okay? Um, that that looks good. I could go in and t tweak a little bit and, you know, kern some things a little bit, which is just gonna be individually selecting space between a couple characters and adjusting them, okay? Which is what we're gonna talk about and I segue down here. Okay, your kerning, once I set my type here, I'll see that I have different, uh, if I'm in my t character palette, okay, which is this type character, command T is what I use. Um, I can see here that when I select this, this, is, this typeface is uh, Franklin Gothic, ITC Franklin Gothic, which is, is spaced pretty well, and most well-designed typefaces have some good spacing already built in. A lot of the free fonts you'll, you'll download from like the font and things like that, don't have that same quality of spacing. So you're gonna to have to be really aware of that and never accept the default, okay? Um, in any spacing situation for the most part, all right? Now, if I take something like this, now when I say that I'm not applying that to text, okay? If it's something that's a lot of text, you're not gonna go in and kern a bunch of text, but if you're gonna deal with headlines and subheads, any quotes, anything that's a you know larger focal point, you wanna make sure that you're uh, tweaking the spacing. In your character palette, if you look at your your uh, this section here, this is your kerning section, okay? You're gonna see that there are a few different presets. You have optical, metrics, and if it's at zero, that's essentially your default, okay? So you're gonna have, go online, and you're gonna see a lot of debates. Should I use optical, should I use metrics, you know, et cetera. I'd say for me, in a larger display situation, if I'm gonna use one, I'll use the optical setting. And you can see that that works pretty well here. The spacing is pretty good, which doesn't mean that I might not go in and tweak things. I might still do that, okay? This is kerning uh, set to optical default, okay? Um, the optical option. This is the same size and same everything set to metrics. You can see it's slightly more open in this zone, okay? So I would then go in and, and kern that, okay? This is the default, all right? And I think it looks less 
together and uh, tight than, than the top one here for optical. This is set to total default. Um, and that's what you don't want to accept, okay? So if I go in here, let's say I have this default setting. If I want to go ahead and tweak this spacing, I'm going to take my type tool, okay? I'm going to put my cursor between those two characters that need help. And I'm going to use my kerning functions here to manually tweak that, okay? This is not unlike what you guys did when we looked at that, uh, that you know, that uh, kerning uh, that game we did online uh, in class, okay? So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that, again, you want to pretend you're pouring even amounts of, say, even amounts of sand between each character, okay? And you want to have equal amounts of space as much as you can, okay? Another helpful tool is sometimes to select three letters. And seeing them in the negative space can also help you get a clearer sense of, okay, how much, you know, how much tighter should I go here? Um, you know, and if, you're, if it's going by, you know, larger increments, you can go in and maybe 40 is too big, maybe 35 works, okay? Uh, do I need to go in here and, and open that or, or keep that tight? You can make those calls as you go. This is a thing that's just going to take experience and, and time. And over, you know, over time, your eye will start to um, adjust further, okay? Now, it's, it's tricky because on screen is one thing. You can zoom out. It looks one way, okay? And then when you zoom in, it might look another way. The ultimate thing is to always print because these things do look different on screen than they do in print. And so printing it out and looking at your spacing is crucial, okay? So that's letter spacing and kerning, all right? Line spacing is another important uh, consideration, all right? And this is not too meant to represent uh, how a layout should be. These are way too split apart and this is, there's too much space here. This is just to show you that even though you're on your poster, you're not gonna have this much text necessarily, unless you have a blurb down at the bottom that's a call to action, a little bit of more uh, supportive info. Regardless, even if you just have a few lines of text, you don't want to go for the default. Here's Franklin Gothic uh, 8 point set on a default line spacing. Okay, you can see it's default there when it has those little parentheses, okay? And this is set to metrics because uh, it's text. This is set at uh, 8 on 10.75. So when you see something that says, you know, 8 on 11 or 9 on 12, that's 9 point size, so it's 9 points large, you know, size and 11 or 12 points below that's our, or you know in this bit in this case it would say 8 on 10.7 8 is your size 10.75 is your line spacing another word for line spacing is letting okay if you click and hold you know hover over your, these little deals there they'll tell you what they are okay which is always you, you may know already um, but letting and line spacing are used interchangeably okay so this is default which is denser a little bit less approachable this is uh, with a little bit of line spacing added. Now you can tweak accordingly. You can go larger. If you go too large, you're going to start to get stripes. You don't want that. Uh, you can manually tweak it and, you know, this starts to get a little too tight. That feels pretty good, but don't accept just whole values. Sometimes, you know, it's the Goldilocks thing. It's some are too hot, some are too cold. Maybe 10 and a half is just right. Okay. And those make all the difference in the world. Those little half, quarter, et cetera points. Okay. So that's line spacing. All right, something to be thinking about. Scaling your type is another uh, consideration. What are the scale relationships you have between all of the elements in your layout, okay? I'm not gonna say I use this all the time. I don't, but this is something that you might wanna think about. Um, the Fibonacci sequence is a way of scaling elements in ways that are proportioned to each other, okay? So the Fibonacci sequence is a series of, in this case, point sizes, okay? Where each number each number is the sum of the previous two numbers, okay? So, and you can start at whatever number. So let's say you have a type that's typeface, let's say you're starting, you're starting at eight, okay? Uh, and then you're gonna, so you're not gonna start at zero, you're gonna start at eight point if that's your smallest point size. And then you're gonna start sequencing up from there. Just for our purposes, if I, if I go to zero, okay, and then I add, the next number, I go from zero to one. One plus zero is one, okay? One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight and five, 13. 13 and eight, 21. You get the drift, okay? And so then this type all here is scaled up in a Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence, okay? Which is interesting because you get this uh, kind of a cool sense of proportion automatically happening too which is kind of neat. Um, and, and so I, you know that 
that they're scaled proportionally to each other, okay? Now, that said, I'm not always using that, especially if I'm using multiple types you know, of, of information and I have a lot of different hierarchical elements that I gotta consider. Um, I'm gonna always let my eye be the judge, okay? So that's, that's something that you wanna be uh, thinking about. But here is one where we did consider uh, the values and from this sequence at least, we took you know, values from this um, sequence and size everything accordingly, okay? With the headline being at 34 points, okay? I don't have a line spacing value there because it's at the top of the situation, at the, at the information here, so it's, there's no line spacing that it needs to worry about. Beneath that is 13 on 18, okay? Which is 13 high, I'm sorry, I'm sorry 13 size, and 18 points of line spacing, okay? And then I have eight on 11 here for my, you know, so if I have a headline, a subhead, and a blur, okay? That's essentially using that scale, um, the scale from the Fibonacci sequence to make sure that those things feel like they're proportionally together, okay? So I have a clear hierarchy here, my main headline, my subhead, and I've also, as you can see, I've used weights. This is a, a demi-bold weight, which in, in uh, I'm sorry, Franklin Gothic is essentially like their bold. Uh, I have a book weight, which is essentially their regular, and the other book weight here, okay? So these are the same weight. Um, size is, is, you know, scale is also a way to create hierarchy. So I have weight and size, uh, and then I have, you know, a lighter weight with a larger size, and then the same weight is here, but it's even smaller size, okay? So that might be something to consider when you're dealing with your poster projects for your, uh, your type information. Um, using scaling and using your spacing to your full advantage to create a, uh, any kind of typographic situation that makes it look uh, considered and detailed. It's crucial. Uh, any questions, let me know, and we'll see you in class.